Hello, welcome to the What If Brigade. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a response video. This video is in response to Matt Easton of Scholar de Editoria. He did a video, uh, uh, Fantasy Weapons and Armor for four specific settings. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link to the description down below. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, some of the things I'm going to be saying are in response to his. So if you haven't seen that video, this might not make as much sense. Uh, I'm going to be covering mine in three sections. Uh, the first is going to be darkness, uh, the second is going to be jungle, and then I'm going to lump together uh, dinosaurs and large riding creatures. So starting out with darkness, this was probably the most fascinating part of Matt Easton's video to me, and I want to uh, kind of build a setting and take it in a little bit different direction. So uh, in, in the setting, you know, people, uh, there, are, there are people and they're in uh, uh, some sort of dark environment, um, but they have uh, normal human vision, hum vision like you or I, so they can't see in the dark. And I want to just uh, build this from the ground up. I want to say, if you're a parent raising a toddler in this kind of environment, uh, you're going to be raising them very differently. They're going to have elbow pads, they're going to have knee pads, they're going to have boots to protect them from stubbed toes, and they're probably going to have a helmet. Yeah, there's going to be fires. Yeah, you're going to grow luminescent mushrooms or whatever. But even in that environment, you're going to stub your toe a lot. You're going to fall a lot. And this brings me to um, the weapons and armor. And I think you would want to have the best armor possible. Uh, not just even, not even just for uh, uh, combat, but even just going out hunting. You're you're just going to have uh, people who. Who run into things more, they smack into tree limbs, they, they fall down, uh, and, and they're going to want to have protection, uh, uh, especially elbows, knees, head. Um, and um, I'm going to disagree with Matt a little bit on the shield, and the reason I'm going to disagree on the shield is because I think in that dark environment, you would want your hands available to uh, prevent falls uh, when you stumble, but also to uh, detect things. If, if, you, if, you're, if your eyesight is compromised, you're going to want to utilize your other senses, uh, hearing, smell, and touch. Uh, you're going to want to feel along the walls of a cave. You're going to want to uh, uh, check uh, rocks in the water. Uh, you, you, you know, you're going to want to feel the bark of a tree, you know, climb up trees, those kinds of things. Uh, and, and you're going to want to have your hands available. If you have any weapons, you're going to want to have them sheathed so that you have your hands available at almost all times and, uh, and you just bring those weapons out when, when you need them. But for the most part, you're going to want to have uh, your hands. Um, and so, so not a shield. And that puts even more emphasis on armor. Uh, the second thing is I think that you would bring in uh, animal assistance. Uh, I, I think if you don't have... Um, if, if, you, if, you, if you can't see as well, you're going to want to have um, a, a dog or perhaps a, a, a cat, uh, something to lead you around, something that does well in the dark, something with a great sense of smell, good sense of hearing. Uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be a dog. It could be, you know, other animals as well. But I think, uh, you know, in our world, dogs make a ton of sense. Uh, they would be able to run messages. Uh, they, would, they would be able to alert you if something was nearby. If you're going out in the darkness, uh, you're going to have a really big problem with, say, a tiger, because you're not going to hear it when it's coming, uh, and your only warning is going to be when it's on your back. Uh, so, again, <laughs> putting emphasis back on having great armor uh, and not necessarily, and a shield not necessarily availing you very much. Um, you would probably also want to have a stick uh, for feeling around, uh, just like a, uh, a normal sighted impaired person uh, uh, on, on our world. You want to be able to check the depth of the water before you jump in. Uh, you know, you'd want to see if, if there's a cliff ahead of you, uh, those kinds of things. And this all kind of moves uh, together um, into combat, which I think would be um, kind of slow and ponderous, where you would move uh, as stealthily as possible towards the enemy. You would muffle your, your armor and your boots with, say, furs or, or uh, you know, those kinds of things you'd want. You'd want to be as quiet as possible. I disagree with Matt Easton a little bit on the utility of slings and bows. Um, first of all, because I think you're going to be, you're going to be wearing such heavy armor anyway, and you're going to want to muffle your sound both for hunting and, uh, and for combat. 
Uh, so you're going to be wanting to move as quietly as possible. And then uh, it's also really easy to make a noisy distraction. So, uh, you know, you can't just, if, if an opposing force uh, ties uh, a, a bunch of cans on a string to some pigs and lets them loose in the field, uh, your archers can't just fire at noises. Uh, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, also, people are probably going to be using noise to communicate. They're going to be using horns. They're going to be using drums. Uh, you know, if your archers are firing in the direction of the drums and the drums are uh, 500 meters away, it's going to be really hard to hit them. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think that there's, there's going to be uh, noise as a distraction. Noise is dif disinformation. Um, and and the, you would just need too many stones and arrows to, to make that work. Because uh, you're, you're, if you're just off by just a, a little bit, if the noise is coming from uh, 45 degrees and uh, your opponents are actually at 40 degrees, the arrows are all going to go in the wrong direction. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's going to be a lot tougher <laughs> than you would think. Like, yeah, if you're alone, you know, maybe you could shoot an arrow at a noise. But if you're in a big group, it's going to be tough. Um, I definitely do agree. So, so I think, you know, muffled, heavy armor, slow and steady. If you're, if you're running or riding or, uh, or hurrying in any way in the dark, you, you're going to fall over a lot. Uh, you know, you could get trampled by the people behind you, those kinds of things. So I think creeping stealthily towards the enemy is going to be the big thing. I do definitely agree with Matt on things like Warhammers and things that you swing. Uh, I think that, that that's going to be the preferred weapon. You're not going to want precision thing. You're not going to want uh, a rapier or you're not going to want a spear uh, because those are very nimble weapons that require you to put them in specific spots. You're going to want something that you can swing in a wide arc even if you can't see. Uh, uh, so uh, something that, you know, it's going to, it's going to do some damage, uh, whether it connect, whenever, wherever it connects, uh, it doesn't matter if you hit somebody in the arm or the head or the kneecap with a hammer. Uh, it, it, uh, but it does matter, um, uh, very much with a lot of, um, precision weapons. So those are not going to be, uh, as useful. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of my, um, you know, overview on, on the darkness, I, I think that, you know, yeah, focus on armor, focus on weapons that don't, uh, that, that, that you can swing in a wide arc. And then, um, you know, think about the communication, uh, you know, probably musical instruments, codes, uh, that sort of thing, uh, because the different units aren't going to be able to see what's going on in the battle. And they're going to rely heavily on uh, communicating with each other, making noises so that each unit kind of knows what's happening. Um, and then of course the, the animals are just going to be absolutely crucial in both, uh, you know, uh, domestic life in, uh, hunting and gathering, uh, and in war, uh, you know, people are just going to be absolutely reliant on animals to be their eyes and ears, um, or noses and ears, uh, <laughs> uh, to, to, in order to detect incoming enemies in, in order to, uh, uh, you know, scout, uh, send messages, all those kinds of things. It's going to be super important. Uh, so that's kind of my overview on the darkness. Um, and then, uh, second, I want to talk a little bit shortly about, um, the jungle. And, and in this, I'm actually going to refer back to, um, my earlier, um, uh, video, uh, weapons. What if you were an adventurer? Uh, you know, it's a top five list. And, and I think um, uh, the weapons that, that Matt mentioned are also very similar. You know, large knives, short swords, uh, hatchets, uh, uh, short bow, spear, those kinds of things. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to endorse those for similar reasons. Uh, when you're in the jungle, uh, <clears throat> when you're in the jungle, it's, it, your movement is going to be restricted and there's going to be a whole lot of problems that aren't fighting. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not going to be, uh, like, um, you know, it's not like going on a road, uh, you know, even if it is like a road, uh, you know, floods can wash them out. Uh, there can be, uh, large animals that are, um, large predatory animals that are dangerous. 
uh, even if there aren't any uh, uh, humanoid foes. Um, and uh, there's, it's going to go slower. Uh, the, the the jungle is 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 going to be the jungle is, is this is man versus nature. It's it's not a man versus man conflict uh, or human versus human conflict. It's a human versus nature uh, in the jungle. You know you're going to encounter uh, your your supply lines are going to be terrible. Uh, you, you know you you're going to get sick a lot. You're going to get things like malaria, uh, those kinds of things. There's going to be uh, really bad roads. There's going to be really bad trails. There's going to be lots of swampy ground and uh, dense foliage that you can't really get through, terrible biting insects, those kinds of things. And so uh, most of your weapons are going to double as tools. Uh, you're going to want to be able to clear brush. You're going to want to be able to chop trees. You're going to want to be able to hunt uh, because a, the, a lot of the challenges that you're going to face are, are not going to be combat related. So you want um, tools that double as weapons. Uh, and that was kind of the focus of my earlier video. If you're hiking or camping and, uh, uh, and this goes triple for the jungle, uh, you want your, you don't want to have a, a weapon that's only a weapon. You want it to be something useful. Uh, and you don't want to put extra weight in your pack. That's not, uh, food, water, uh, or, or something that you're really going to need. So you're going to want to focus on, uh, um, uh, weapons and that, that, that are, that's, that's very utilitarian. Uh, so, uh, that was just a, a, sh a short one, but the, uh, the other one I, I want to cover, I'm going to combine, uh, the two categories, uh, dinosaurs and large riding creatures. I thought Matt had some really awesome ideas. He had the idea for, uh, the multi-person pole arm. Um, and then, you know, he talked about uh, historically, um, people putting the, the enclosures on top of, uh, elephants and those kinds of things. And uh, so I, I want to combine those two and add uh, one more. Um, I think that if if there are dinosaurs, uh, you know, I echo pretty much all the things that uh, Matt said on, on dinosaurs and large riding creatures. And um, I think that if there are dinosaurs, I think that humans would domesticate them. Now, before you jump into the comments all angry, uh, you know, humans have domesticated chickens. So, uh, you know, and, and people have chickens as pets and they like them. They cuddle them in their arms. Uh, and so, so dinosaurs are not too stupid to be domesticated. Uh, don't, don't fall for that. And if, if humans were in close contact with them, there are some small dinosaurs, obviously. Um, you know, we could domesticate them for their eggs, uh, just like chickens. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but also, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, if you can train um, uh, an elephant to be a riding creature, Maybe you can train a stegosaurus to be a riding creature. Yeah, you know, maybe it won't work very well, but I think I think humans could try. I think that's something to think about, especially in a fantasy environment where you're not necessarily talking about an actual stegosaurus. If you're talking about um, a large, more intelligent creature, then definitely. Uh, if it's an herbivore and uh, it's it, it doesn't if it doesn't kill the humans immediately, humans are going to figure out they're going to steal its young. And, and raise them um, in, into uh, domesticated riding creatures, those kinds of things. And so they're gonna use the stegosaurus as their weapon. <laughs> Convenient. Um, and, you know, I think that um, kind of in a mix and match, uh, I think they're gonna put the, you know, archery tower things on the stegosaurus, of course, um, multiple people, those kinds of things. And then, you know, when we talked about, when he talked about the elephants, I think that if people used elephants a lot in war, you would start to see humans using the multi-person pole arms, um, and uh, and um, uh, you know, just kind of uh, coming up with unique solutions to to prevent being trampled by elephants. Uh, and I, the other thing that I think would come into play in um, large creatures is a pit trap, um, uh, basically uh, a big pit that uh, is easy for the animals to fall into with spikes on the bottom. Uh, so if you're frequently facing dinosaurs or elephants, I, I think one of the uh, uh, defensive fortifications that people would, would use would be to, um, to conceal uh, these pit traps so that uh, the, those large animals couldn't just, you know, uh, rush them. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah, that would be a lot of work to make. But 
uh, you know, fighting a dinosaur is hard work. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I did really like when he talked about um, multiple people being on a dragon. Uh, there is uh, a series of books, uh, the His Majesty's Dragon book by um, uh, the author is called, uh, the last name is Novak, uh, but, but fantastic books. Uh, and, and they're basically, it's about the Napoleonic Wars, but with dragons and the dragons have crews. Really excellent. And I think that's a, a fabulous example if you're looking for what would aerial combat be like um, aboard dragons, um, you know, it, 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 it covers, it covers a lot of that, uh, you know, you, you can, you can drop things, um, you can use missile weapons, of course, uh, and then if it's big enough, uh, you can, I mean, you can board a ship or something off of, off of a dragon, so you can, you can land troops on stuff and, and, and kind of, you know, helicopter style, uh, and so I think that adds a, a unique, uh, dimension um, to 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 combat. So I'm sorry, I, I tried to cover a lot of ground. Uh, the the original video that I'm responding to was 39 minutes long. So sorry if this is uh, dragged on quite a bit. Uh, but um, hopefully uh, um, this video and Matt's video has inspired you to think of uh, you know some some unique uh, um, fantasy weapons and armor for uh, for for your scenarios. What do you think? What are some ideas that that you you think would be good ideas in darkness or jungles or with huge riding creatures and dinosaurs? What 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 weapons and armor would you select? This has been the What If Brigade. Have a great day.